Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're here back at War Dogs Gaming. I almost said War Dogs Invitational. I don't know why I said that. It sounds better. It's it been a long awesome. day. It is. It is kind of sound nice. That's what I'm all about, making things sound nice. And you do an ex exceptional yeah. job with that, Mr. Perez. So <laughs> here are the first match of the top eight. We've got Jason returning with his Green Red Monsters, taking on the number one seed in this thing, Dylan. Uh, what is his last name? Brody? Dylan Brody? Brody. And he's playing Sadistic Whip. That is a very strong deck, and it kind of takes a lot of folks by surprise. Yeah, I mean, he's. Uh, do you know? Do you know if he's lost any single matches so far? I think he's he's he hasn't too old everybody. Okay. But uh, he has. Uh, he's I think undefeated, which is very impressive. There was a, a really good uh, field of players today. Yeah, some really impressive magic going on today, and some crazy things. What was, what was up with that last game, Saul? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll it was just... Micah. You know, she ended up winning that. We didn't record the third game. Or rather, we did record the third game, but we weren't there on commentary. Um, but Solomon ended up decking himself out in that second game. And then in the in the third one, Micah came back and won that one as well. So, unfortunately, neither made it to the top eight. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to watch. Oh, yeah. It shows the power of those two decks. Absolutely. I'm very impressed with what Jason's done with this greed red monsters thing, and it's it's interesting. Yep. And they are going to get started here right away. Looks like both players are going to be keeping their hands, which is you know what we say. No team mulligans. No, team no mo. That's what we no do. No mo. You mulligan. You have the team. You're dead to me. Yep. Dead. You, you have no. It's probably too drastic of a response now that I think. I don't about think it. so because <laughs> you know. That's life on the edge at its finest. Okay, so what's what's Dylan's plan of action here with this Sadissi Whip? He basically... And does he realize his deck sounds like it came from the movie Pootie Tang? <laughs> I don't know. But that's... <laughs> You know, you know, you remember the Pootie Tang? <laughs> I've never seen the, the You Pootie haven't Tang. seen it? Oh, man. Chris Rock, Louis C.K.? Louis C.K. directed that movie, I think. It's excellent. Well... Chris Rock talks like that. He's like, sip a tay and a sip a tie. That's what he says. <laughs> Something like that. All the Pooty all the Pootie Tang fans movies. are going to get on with that. Those are adult movies. Man. Oh, yeah. It's, and it is an adult movie. So, sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> oh, no. I'm totally like, my mind is blown and off track. I have no idea. Let's just watch the match. Okay. <laughs> We're just going to be quiet now. So okay, basically, so. it's kind of the same premise as what happened with uh, Solomon's deck. Is he loads the graveyard, and um, chaos soon ensues. Yeah. Okay. And we know what's we know what to expect from Jason. We've seen him a few times already on this uh, today. Oh, so we so got a Sylvan character out. Yep. And what's really powerful about the Sadissi Whip is not only does he load his graveyard. He continuously loads their graveyard with their stuff too, which is bad for the other player. Yeah, it's really bad for green red monsters, huh? Oh yes. And I haven't even looked at his sheet. I don't think. Let me see. At what his actual deck list is, but something tells me he's got Drown in Sorrow somewhere, and that just destroys a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of things. It's a very strong card. Let me see. Yeah, he's got three in his sideboard, it looks Three like. in the sideboard? Mm -hmm. We'll see how this turns out. He's playing uh, Sagamaller, and that is uh, one of the most powerful cards. It's kind of like um, Lou Scott Vargas. He's real famous for using really expensive casting cost of cards uh -huh. because they're so powerful. Well, that's basically what the, the Sagumaller is. The Sagumaller is a six drop. You can flip him for a little bit cheaper, but he is a six six with hex proof. And in this format and in this meta game, that is really powerful. Hex he also has hex proof. going to win some games. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just tough to deal with. And that's where that's why I was telling you earlier mm -hmm. that, that this you know there's a lot of decks that have been built and that are strong. But I don't think that the, the, the big deck has been built yet. You know, because like the Sagumaller is really strong. And uh, we had another player, uh, Zach Singer, that was running um, a crazy uh, reanimator deck. And it's just, there's it's open right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a lot of stuff that can be done. 
Yeah, Zack Singer should really be in the top eight. I'm disappointed that um, the turn of events that happened. But yeah, he you was. Play, a... You play. You play smart, both in game and out. I guess. Sometimes there is the the right wrong move. You know, right? It's just if you don't have what it, what you need, you're gonna lose. Jason contemplating decisions right now. I see a in the near future, maybe not near future. I see a very large uh, Genesis hiker <laughs> coming out. We got some goblins on the attack. Yep. Maybe we'll see some more pandemonium. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can only hope. Yeah, I'm excited for some more pandemonium. <laughs> Mr. Jason really should have just sat here all day long because he's been in just about every featured match we've had. He really should, yeah, yeah. It's like, no, you ain't got to move, guy. You just go ahead and sit there. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> you might need to change sides, though. Out. What's the prize support for today? Uh, the first place is going to get uh, two buys, which in the Grand Prix in San Antonio, which is an amazing prize. Mm -hmm. That means that uh, you don't have to fight it out in the trenches for the first two rounds. Mm -hmm. and it's just it's a leg up, really. A, a, you know, that way if you've got something that you're, you know, that you've built a deck that's, you know, going against the current meta game that you don't have to worry about losing, hopefully to a rogue build or something like that that somebody else is trying. I mean, there's just tons of advantages to it. And of course, everybody's getting booster packs and first yeah. or fourth or getting, you know, just tons of packs. We had a really great turnout today. And uh, we're really excited about bringing a competitive magic to San Angelo. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's exciting. I mean, there's a lot of people that came in here from out of town. That was awesome to see. Yeah, they Jason they being did. one of them, huh? Yeah, he, I mean, they didn't just come, you know, it's like two and four hours away. All right. And they came and kicked some butt. Oh, yeah, guns blazing. <laughs> they didn't they didn't take no prisoners. I like those guys. Uh, Dylan came from California, Southern California. No way. Well, just there's a story uh, behind that, but okay, you know what? Okay. I'm going to stick to okay. the fact he came from Southern <laughs> California, on, period. Yeah, he's, he's on the run. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a story up if you're not going to say the real thing. He's on the run right now from a cartel. Oh, that's awesome. For rig and magic games yeah. down, down in Baja, Mexico. You know how awesome that'd be? I mean, not necessarily be like <laughs> running from the mafia. Yeah. The I'd cartels. Watch, I'd watch the Lifetime movie for sure. Just as they're about to catch him, he turns around and throws like some brim at him. He's like, <laughs> 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 that is a mighty strong Goblin Rebel Master. <laughs> He's a six foot. Oh, we got some more cars just coming. I've got to say, this board looks really good for uh, Jason right now. Yeah, it does. It really does. Dylan's a pretty savvy player, though. You know, just whenever you think you've got it. The the tables change right that you see yourself going down and down and down you know i think that's one of the things that's helped magic stay so relevant for so long yeah is mm -hmm. that um it allows for crafty players to to not not only just build a better solution to the problems that are out there but at will right Do right the same thing on the fly it's, it, it's it, like yeah very good i guess what i'm trying to say if, you, if you're not playing magic now you should consider it I believe it's pretty recently gotten the, the mantle of world's finest strategy game. Yeah, I can believe it. Chess players are 
calling foul and <laughs> there's major a lot war of, players, major wars. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of um, chess players who are just up in arms in general. They don't feel like chess is getting a big enough big enough credit in the board game scene. I could imagine that. Yeah. You know, I mean that's a a classic war strategy game, chess. I mean, I mean it's one of the best games ever ever made, right? Yeah, it really is. Talk about timeless. See, this is where things could possibly start going south, depending on what he has in his hand. Love the artwork on that token. I think that is a... If I remember right, I'm going to say that that is a... And his little friend. <laughs> um, I'm going to say either... Innistrad? Or... Mirrodin, nah, Scars of Mirrodin. I'm gonna say Scars of Mirrodin tokens. Oh really? I don't remember, but that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Squeeze on right now. Squeeze on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the Food Network shenanigans. <laughs> Squeeze on. One of those goblins got a boon Seder on it, huh? I prefer the the Boon Shader has a goblin, because I love Boon Shader. <laughs> that is a <clears throat> a silly amount of goblin tokens. I, I you know the one thing I wish they were doing that they're not right now is updating their live total, so it's hard to see and follow everything that's going on right now. I had I would assume that Jason has a considerable life advantage. Oh yeah. And that's just about to get even wider with mm -hmm. this attack. I mean he's he still gains life every time he blocks, but the amount of creatures and you know, the amount of board presence he has on his side. Right. He's not gonna gain more than he could deal. But there's a big but mm -hmm. and we might see it. But I think I think he's in pretty good shape. I'd be happy with this. And he's got so much devotion right now. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let, let me look. Let me see if he's running. Yeah, he's got four craters claws. So, I would, I would be real surprised if he didn't have one in his hand right now. Because he's, he's got. I mean, that would just end the game pretty much. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't get to see what's in his hand because he's got the card down. So it's all speculation. Dylan's life total will be going up pretty soon. And to be honest right now, I think Dylan might lose his first game, but he is not really sweating it because of his sideboard. Mm -hmm. The fact that he's got three of the Drowning Sorrows in his sideboard, that is a very hard card for Red Green Monsters to deal with. Hmm. There's a Sagumar. And here comes Doomweight Giant. All of his creatures are basically going to die. Not all of them, but the majority. Look at that. Look at all those, all those poor little tokens going away. That is the power of the Sadisi Whip. And of course the Whip Verbos is legendary, so he's playing another one to kill. Mm -hmm. and, and it just basically stacks off the Doomweight Giant. And if I'm correct, I should, I'm pretty sure the way uh, what Dylan is thinking is that his creatures get negative two, negative two, but because uh, Boon Boon Sater was not 
It's uh, a creature. The creature at the time. It's yeah. it's a layer, so basically all his creatures get negative two, negative two until in a turn. But he wasn't a creature, so now he is. He wasn't part of that effect. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So he still has board presence. That was really, really good. I mean. He did his job. Doomwake Giant came in and did his job. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great play by Dylan. But is it too little too late? He's flipping paper. Come on. <laughs> flipping paper. Come on. <laughs> I think Dylan might have might have misunderstood. I can't understand what they're saying or hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So, but I think that might have, you know, the fact that that layer. He thought that that boon Seder might have died also, and therefore, you know, might have make him rethink his strategy. It looked like Dylan wrote down a 12. I'm, I'm not sure, but this is what it looked like. Okay, Dylan's on the play right now. Looks like he's going to tap. Counting up mana. He's got a hero's downfall at top. Oh, it looks like he's shuffling his library, so. Did he have a downfall in his hand? He had a hero's downfall on top. And this is where the red green monsters is probably going to shine because. This deck does not top deck bad. If, I mean, he's not top decking yet. I don't know what card he has, but this is so consistent as getting good cards on top. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know. Pelucranos is a good card. Stormbreath is a great card. Like even, a, even pulling out Xenagos would be good for mm -hmm. him right now. <clears throat> That's how this how this has how things work. If you're not prepared, you know that's that's all you have to do. Like whip of variables is the main, you know, one of the main strategies of that deck. Right. And if something happens and you destroy the whip of variables, he's in a really tough situation. Mm -hmm. It's just, you just have to know what to sideboard. And whenever people come from all around and people you know that don't normally play together play different people, mm -hmm. you know, it's just hard to to be ready. So I'm not sure who scooped when right here. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was probably uh, Jason. Yeah, it appears that after Jason had played those tokens that... Uh, he basically or, sorry, he, Dylan he, played those tokens. He, he, he loaded up his graveyard suit with so much power. Let's see, what, what did Jason put in? What do you think he's going to do? I'm going to say...
definitely he's got unravel the aether in his deck as a one of mm -hmm. and two back to nature he's definitely gonna go put those three cards in so it's like he's putting he's putting in one two three four five cards six cards six cards from his uh from his sideboard yeah i'm gonna say back to nature unravel the aether um success and tactics maybe three We'll see. I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure he's got Unravel and Back to Nature. That, that would be good, solid plays. Hmm. And definitely for Dylan's side, um, Disdainful Strokes, uh, probably Negates. And that Drown and Sorrows, huh? And Drown and, uh, Drowns. Uh, maybe even Bile Blight. Oh, I love, I love for Bile Blight with Token Removal. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a lovely card. It's just basically he. You have to have the the nerve to play a, a late game deck, mm -hmm. you know, because if you could stabilize, that's basically what you do is you stabilize. Yeah, I admire the patience that it comes with the guy who's playing a late game deck. It's very um, you know, you survive that initial rush. There's a lot of players who are playing just fast decks. So that's one of the big. You know, right? You you making <laughs> how how fast is my deck? That's the question you always ask. Mm -hmm. When yeah. can I get a kill? And if that's unhindered, you know. Right. And basically, a lot of decks are mid range right now. Like Sadissi Whips, more like a mid range to late, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um. And it just if you look, you just saw what happened mm -hmm. early game. He's got to take a beating. If he can stabilize, drop Whip of Erebos, it just gets ugly. It's like, you remember the Lost Boys movie? Oh, yeah. You remember the final battle between Michael and uh, what David? The, David? Yeah. He, he looks at him and says, my turn. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> hey, uh, do you think you can ask them really quick if they if they wouldn't mind using the uh, dice yeah. for life totals? Let me go to see. Just oh, so we could follow along a little easier on the second Yeah, game. I'll be right back. So we are just about to start getting underway of uh, game two in the first round of the uh, final eight here. So there's going to be They will be flogged if they don't use the dice. <laughs> that's, that's extreme. Yeah, hey, you know what? <laughs> the pink dice, especially. Looks like both guys are just about shuffled up here. Okay, here we go, game two. Let's see if Sadissi Whip can take it out of this one too. Oh, or if Jason can find that uh, that inner green red monster mm -hmm. and come back from this. Let's see if we can make this. Inner green red monster. Yeah. It 
looks like Dylan has a, a um, it's a pretty good hand. It's, it looks like he's got the mana he needs. Um, it might be a little slow, maybe. Mm -hmm. and it looks like he's gonna keep. And right, Jason, Jason looks like he's gonna mulligan again, or rather, in the process of doing it already. And six good cards are better than seven bad ones. <laughs> Okay, here he goes. Quite a bit of land from what I saw. Yep, look pretty good. And we're underway. Game two. And the Mystic. Is that a Storm Breath I saw? It might be. Oh, you know what? I don't think so. Does he have a Magma Chat? That's not Magma Chat, is it? Down to 19. I think he's fetching a uh, mountain here. Yep. Back to nature and, and uh, unravel the aether. Really good cards in this matchup. Mm -hmm. He just has to pull them, and uh, his opponent just has to have answers. Looks like Crater's Claws. He's gonna. What he's gonna do is uh, a big strategy with his Hornet's Nest is to, to basically. Uh, Crater's Claws or Lightning Strike his own Hornets needs to create lots of tokens mm -hmm. which in this matchup could be really dangerous because he, he's got to be prepared for the Drown of Sorrow or Bile Bite mm -hmm. but you know what it also draws out a Bile Bite from Drown of Sorrow because you have to deal with it Sarkon, that's what that was. I saw a Sarkon. Oh, a Sarkon, okay. The cursor Crifix out. Closer. I think Sarkon is a good matchup. You know, good in this matchup. Mm -hmm. I know he's got Heroes Downfall and all that, but still, that takes some of the pressure off of his other creatures. Right. And if you look, the, the strategy is to stand bag a little bit and not play a whole bunch of stuff. But the problem is he gains so much life in this time and it gets into his late game. Right.
Okay, it fetches a, another mountain. Lots of shuffling going around in this game. And once the fetch lands were reprinted, everyone knew to be prepared for lots of shuffling. <laughs> comes Mr. Sarkon and something tells me the negative four will soon ensue. Yep, he's gonna kill off the courser and uh, Sarkon will go down to one loyalty. So the interesting thing about uh, planeswalkers for you guys that aren't uh, totally familiar so they have that loyalty counter that uh, Jason is using to mark the die right now. That loyalty counter can be raised, it can be lowered. If it ever hits zero, like it just did, <laughs> the um, planeswalkers, planeswalkers are actually going to go away. But um, planeswalkers all have three abilities. Usually one's going to raise the die, one may keep it where it is, and one may reduce the value. Um, planeswalkers are also a target for attacking creatures. So whenever you declare an attack against an opponent who has a planeswalker, you need to be specific and say that this damage is either going to go directly to the player or to whatever planeswalker you want to put that damage on. Again, Great. whenever they take damage, they're going to get uh, the loyalty counters you're going to remove, just like it was life. And a part of the strategy sometimes is to go ahead and use a, a $50 planeswalker, $30 planeswalker to gain you, you know, some time. $5 planeswalker, I mean, the. Crater's Claws. He's looking for that whip. This is where uh, Jason could really take advantage. And it looks like uh, Dylan just pulled Drowning Sorrow, so we'll see what happens. Is he fetching two lands right now? He's going for a swamp. And a swamp. When do you think uh, wizards are going to repent those full art lands? It's got to be coming sooner or later. That would right? be nice. Everyone loves those lands. It's a, it's a treat. It really is, and it just looks so much better. I guess we got to go back to Zendikar before too long, right? That's when this came out. Zendikar World Wake, and hopefully we'll get some full art lands again or something different, maybe. Yeah. We had unglued, unhinged, and Zendikar lands, and all are. Highly valuable, highly sought after lands. Mm -hmm. the, the artwork is amazing on them. They are. It looks beautiful. Okay, Jason's got all the man in the world to do something. Does he have the cards in hand to be able to make a difference here in this game? We're judging this by life. We're going to see that uh, you know the game is basically tied up. However, we know Dylan has got some answers for things that Jason hasn't even played yet. So yep. there's Storm Breath. He's going to fly over. He's going to hit him for four, I believe. It will. And uh, and Dylan has a Hero's Downfall in his hand, which I'm sure that as soon as he untaps, he will be using on Storm Breath because there's only so long you can let him live. Right. Before it's game three. Oh, no, no, nope, he's saving them. No, that's a smart play.
Hmm. He's definitely gonna have a response. Yeah. See, the the way that works is uh, basically what happens is Sarkum becomes an indestructible 4-4 dragon. Mm -hmm. But because he has a moment in time whenever his ability is put onto the stag that he can respond to it, that's how he's able to kill it. Hmm. This is not looking good so far for Jason. Down to one card in hand. We think that Dylan's got a Drown in Sorrows there available. Oh. I think this may be the starting of the end, the beginning of the end, as they say, for all Jason. Quick reminder to adjust your life. We are at two health left for Jason. Things are looks not like he's good. top decking. See him shaking his head. Yep. He's checking to make sure. There it is. Oh, good sportsmanship between the yep. two. Dylan remains undefeated in this tournament, and he moves on to the second round of the final eight.